JN1 COVID subvariant, COVID-19, Japanese encephalitis, chikungunya, acute encephalitis syndrome, West Nile encephalitis, viral hepatitis, Nipah, swine flu. These were all first reported in Kerala before any other state in India. In fact, research suggests that at least 10 viral and non-viral disease outbreaks happened in God's own country in the recent past. Monkeypox case has been reported in Kerala. But the state recording a large number of outbreaks is not exactly a bad thing. There are multiple reasons for this, like the state's robust health management system. Kerala does rigorous testing on people entering the state from both airports and seaports. And because of the state's high literacy rate, the population is also very aware. Reports show that ASHA workers and women's self-help groups aid this awareness even in remote villages and play an important role in the early detection of diseases. This selfless cooperation of our general public has played a major role in keeping Kerala safe thus far. In fact, the first person detected with monkeypox in Kerala had actually volunteered to be tested after he found out that he had been in contact with someone who tested positive in the UAE. Epidemiologists suggest that the state's active surveillance system, capacity building exercises for healthcare workers, community engagement and strategic interventions not only helped detect the viruses but also kept the outbreaks in check. This surveillance system was actually adopted from a system that the state used for disease surveillance in the private sector during the floods of 2018. From starting contact tracing to isolation and treatment, everything we had done in a systematic manner. But what is it about the southern state that often makes it the first to record diseases? We have to take into account the state's geography, topography and demography. Kerala has a high population density of both humans and animals. It has massive forest cover and intense monsoons, which makes it susceptible to outbreaks. Our expansion into the Western Ghats also led to the depletion of forests and destroyed habitats of animals like bats, monkeys, civet cats, all common disease vectors. These animals then traveled to areas inhabited by people in search of food and shelter, which might have led to the spread of infections and zoonotic diseases. These are basically diseases that are transmitted from animals to humans or the other way around. For example, leptospirosis was the most fatal zoonotic disease in the state, which killed 290 people in 2022 alone. This was followed by scrub typhus, which claimed 24 lives. Kerala also has a large diaspora with people spread across the globe. A lot of these people are medical students, doctors and nurses. They may be more exposed to bacteria and viruses, which they might unknowingly bring back to the country when they return. In fact, Kerala's handling of COVID-19 in the first few months earned high praise from Niti Aayog, Nobel laureate and economist Amartya Sen, philosopher and critic Noam Chomsky, and the WHO chief scientist Dr. Soumya Swaminathan. But what really worked for Kerala is the fact that the state learned. It learned from the Nipah outbreak in Siliguri in 2001 and then later in the districts neighbouring Bangladesh in 2007 to tackle the outbreak in their own state in 2018. The state also took initiative and learned from countries where these diseases were endemic. For instance, a professor of virology at Nimhans said that Kerala followed protocols established in sub-Saharan Africa to fight Ebola. And finally, the state also has an outpost of the National Institute of Virology, which can aid the state government as well as a strong virology department at the Rajiv Gandhi Center for Biotechnology. The people of Kerala have stood in unison and wholeheartedly adhered to all the directions issued by the state government.